All right, so let's open some things up. I have um, Ubuntu running here for uh, some API work we need to do. Um, let me start over. Let's build a lobby system. Uh, that seems like something we need to do. And um, it's in the line of kind of where we are uh, with things to do uh, um, in the networking space, in the multiplayer space. Um, last time uh, we already built uh, part of it. Um, I haven't touched Godot for a while because I had some live stuff to do. So I'm a little bit lost in my own project. Ah, here we go. I remember. So what we need to do is set our project up to start the lobby um, as our main scene. File, lobby, there we go. Up and post. So we've done that. Um, now we need to... Let's run it um, and see where we are. It runs, it should be calling our API and filling out our um, IP address. It won't do that, of course, because Heroku is not spinning up uh, or is not spun up yet. There we go. Now it did it. Uh, I, I explained this to you last time that Heroku on the free servers, it takes 30 seconds to spin up if nobody's made a request to the service for um, I think I think it's about 30 minutes or something that it it keeps uh, spun up and otherwise it it's it, it goes down and then it takes about like 30 seconds or some somewhere under 30 seconds to spin back up and give you results now of course if your game is running and it's reasonably popular you you should not have that problem uh, then again, you should also not be running on Heroku because it's expensive. So we start off. Um, are we in the 2D space? Yes, we are. Uh, we start off having this. Uh, so that creates a new server. If we hit the start game button. Okay. Uh, let's do that. Do we have something attached to that. This is something I showed you um, the other time as well, how to uh, connect the signal from a UI element to um, to a script. Let's look at the script for a second. So, okay, that was the HTTP request to get the IP address. Now let's hook up the button press to that, um, to the script of now that's interesting. Where do we want that? We kind of just want that in the root, don't we? Because it's just going to be... Um, yeah, why not? We'll, we'll just attach a script here. Let's call this our lobby. Can we? We have a lobby scene, yes. We have no lobby script, I believe. So, okay, so... Let's just uh, create a new script and then we have a lobby script. That should be something useful for us to do some um, general lobby stuff. Uh, for instance, um, connecting this button. So double click on pressed and then connect it to the lobby. Yes, okay. We want this, yes, connect. So now we get that function, on button press, right? And let's clean that up. Um, okay, so what do we want to do? Uh, we want to create a server. And then we want to publish that server's IP address to our API. So other, other players can see it. That's what we want to do. So we need to do some API work here. Um, I... I installed the API on uh, my uh, virtual machine so I didn't have to switch back and forth to Linux because it sucks to have to do that. So let's run that here. Let's open Atom. Uh, and let's see our code. It's going to take a while because I'm running a lot of things now at the same time. 
Yeah, it's taking a really long while. Oh, here we go. All right, so we need another controller. Um, and a new resource. So, okay, uh, first of all, create the controller. Rails G for Rails Generate controller. And we will call this um, hosts. Is hosts a good name or servers? You're hosting a game, but you're publishing a server, servers. Okay. Now, that creates our controller. Then we'll create a model, uh, Rails Generate model um, server, obviously. And a server will have a name, which is a string, and it will have a IP address, which will also be a string, because um, that's just more useful. Does it need anything else? No. We will have to do some stuff to ping server so we can get a um, an is alive signal. We, but we will de deal with that later. Let's just make this migration and then just do Rails DB migrate to add that model to our database. So now uh, it will create uh, that model in the database. Um, if you don't know how Rails migrations work, I suggest you Google it because uh, that's kind of out of the scope of this thing, right? Like, uh, ooh, that's a, uh, I guess I really wanted you guys to see this very clearly. Um, so let's make an index action. It's kind of just the same thing we've done before, right? Um, and in this case, we want to retrieve all servers server dot um, all in fact let's just get them at the order of um, created at actually let's get them at the order of updated at uh, descending so now we'll, we will see the latest updated server descending and then we need to um, render out a JSON uh, file servers so now locally uh, let me let me get a browser up and running if I can get to my uh, bar uh, and meanwhile we can just start the create action as well so we can have a post action which reminds me we I, I seem to forget this sometimes we obviously need to add uh, resources to our routes file which creates our routes that we need servers okay that's done uh, create uh, server equals uh, server dot new server params if at server dot save uh, else and uh, oops ah, fine um, render json um at server dot errors uh, status 42 unprocessable entity um and here we'll just do render json at server okay uh, now we just need to have a protected method uh, server params to create those strong parameters uh, params they require a server so everything needs to be in a nested hash of server and it permits um, a name and a IP I called it IP right uh, IP string yes okay so okay that should be that uh, let's just test out our route real quick localhost 3000 slash servers.json should give me back an empty array no it's uh, okay of course I need to format my JSON correctly Slow as it might be, this should work. Yes, okay. Gives us back an empty JSON file. Fine. 
Now, um, that needs to go up on Heroku. So, I might have to uh, log this in to the right account. Because I'm pretty sure this one isn't logged in to the right account. <clears throat> File modify cannot save. Okay, um, fine. Um, and server to API. Better. Okay, fine. Heroku uh, login. Uh, very fine. Okay, uh, git push. Um, can't remember. Um, no. Actually, let's not do that. It's, it's probably just git push Heroku master. No, okay, git push origin master. There we go. Uh, no, it wants to go to GitHub. Also good because we do need to go to um, GitHub as well. Get uh, the ape machine. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh -huh. Uh, Heroku is not added as a, but I downloaded it. Oh, I downloaded it only from there. So I need to add Heroku uh, repository. Fine. might update you a little bit on Heroku, which is quite nice. You go to your settings and then you should have a git link there. Now let's open up our, um, is it called git config? No. We need to have this file. Okay. Go away. Uh, now we need to add a new remote. And we'll call that Heroku. Oh. Uh, it has a URL equal to that. And it has a fetch equal to plus refs heads star refs remotes slash origin slash star. All right, now we should be able to push the Roku. There we go. So while that is building, uh, that's going to be on Heroku. We need to make another post request. Um, so we did this in account, right? We, we formatted a post request and all that stuff. We made it very dirty. Maybe we can try to do something a little bit more clean this time, but um, in any case, we need to get this and this and this and all of this actually. So, great. I want to make something that we can Uh, not console lobby. First of all, let's let's just dump it in there. So if you do shift um, tab, you can backspace your indentation. Uh, useful to know. Um, this didn't work for our thing last time. 
so we will not do that for now um, okay so we are making an HTTP client okay uh, first of all we need the value from um, line edit so for parent is uh, get get parent okay and then var line edit equals uh, parent dot get no. I'm kind of already starting to forget again how how this works so if this doesn't work we'll see uh, now we have the line edit so var ip equals line edit dot is it text maybe we'll see if it doesn't work we fix it um okay so it connects to this host that's great um status connecting get status blah 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 that's all the same uh, okay from here we need to use um, server and this needs to be IP and this needs to be IP and then all of that can go and then we make a post request to servers dot JSON okay let's try that and then we clean it up and you know for all i know this might be the only thing we do this time i, I don't want to make these hour-long videos i feel that it's not uh not really that great for people to um i'm not sure if it attention spans are that long okay so how do i normally get a node uh, get no yeah so it should be it should be this okay on base null instance okay so i'm on my button right oh no sh oh, shit i'm on the lobby of course uh so i don't even need to do this i just need to do get node i think i can actually just do this uh yeah and then it's happy okay line edit text okay let's try that again it's connecting seems to be pretty much done let's uh, uh, so zero exploit api dot Heroku app.com slash servers.json No such app. What did I call this thing? Oh, dash API, of course. I could have figured that one out. Internal service uh, error. I know why that is. So the thing we should never forget when deploying to Heroku is to call Heroku run Rails DB migrate because now it's trying to access a database table that doesn't exist on Heroku yet um, which also means that definitely our software failed but of course we have no error checking because like uh, we're just not there yet um, okay so let's try to see okay now we get an empty array so we'll run our game again it gets our IP address we hit start game it goes connecting connecting it doesn't say connecting again so i'm just going to assume that it went well and yes we do now have a server published in our database which means that um, we can now start the process of making another uh well i'll just show you i'm just going to dump it in here I, I, 
I want to get into that whole responsive design um, thing for panels and stuff, but I have to experiment. But for now, I'm just going to dump in a child node that is going to be a... What, do we have tables or something? No. Uh, so it'll just be a... A text edit, I suppose. Let me know how you do this. Uh, I, I will look at it as well, but for now I'm just going to take this thing and... Yes, yeah, somebody told me about a trick for this, but I forgot. Uh, but anyways, like this will we'll get there too. And so here we'll publish our uh, list of servers, you know? Um, all right. So this will, we'll call this like the server listing. Server listing, okay. I'm pretty sure we'll use a different element for that, but we're just moving along iteratively, you know, as always. Uh, create a new script, attach it on there. And then, um, I also can't remember how I did that, but I have an example. We're gonna attach a timer and to, to pull our server and update the server listing. So where did I do that again? I did that in my main script, I think. Yes, I did. So we need a timer. Um, go back to the lobby. Um, so, okay. Uh, actually, we don't want it in here. We want it in here, in our server listing. Oh, cool. Here, make a new global timer. So you do timer as new, and then um, back to main. Up. Okay, so we need this, this. Okay, and we do that in the ready function. So in the ready function, we're gonna configure our timer. So we set the wait time to, this is in seconds, yes, this is in seconds. So every 10 seconds we're going to pull for the um, new listing. Add child, uh, all these need to be renamed because we are calling it list timer. You just have to have like a uh, yes okay you just need to create this little thing okay fine uh, where is it funk on list timer timeout so here we need to do another um, HTTP request. Uh, we can just do that like this. Oh. We grab our code here. So we do need to. Oh, um, there was a trick to this. Uh, remember, in our last thing, I did this really weird get parent, get parent, get parent. There were a couple of people who commented on this. Um, and they had some ideas now I will um, I'm going to show you in these places all the people that commented on this because I you know I don't want to play favorites or anything there's a couple of people on reddit and there was a couple of people on uh, other places um, so
let me just find at least one get tree get root bam let's just see the top level but that's not the same as the engines root node okay yeah and there was some refactoring ideas um, this should work we're going to try it and then if it doesn't uh, we will see I'm pretty sure this works uh, so okay get tree get root uh, HTTP request that means that one uh, we want to call servers in this case we we need to refactor this so so bad this is just like becoming a mess uh, but for now we do this and yeah see because now we have a problem with request completed um no worries we can duplicate this one can we duplicate yeah okay we call this one um servers request uh, and then can we somehow disconnect this or how does one disconnect this okay no worries we're just gonna uh, delete this node up just add a new one HTTP servers request Boom. again I keep saying we are we are going to refactor things and we will uh, just I don't know when yet server listing okay did I just add it to the wrong I added it to the wrong thing then yeah okay delete this no, no but that's the same on button press yes okay yeah okay um okay so we actually want to have servers request get that node request this okay um on request completed we will connect that to our server listing so now we have a, a callback method here and then what we will do is um, get the root again is get tree dot get root um, do we actually need to do that because we are in server listing aren't we we are so we don't need to do that we just need to do text how do I normally do that adding content it's just text right insert text that cursor okay all right For now, we'll just do the, is it the body that we need? Uh, result, okay. Result dot. Servers. All right, let's try. Boom. Okay. Um, for some reason, I deleted that. I don't know why. 
Attempt to call function request on base null instance. Okay, HTTP request in line edit. So get tree get root does not work. Um, we have some other ideas. Get node slash root. Okay. So why would you put that there? Uh, in this case, it is root, is it? No, it's not. It's lobby. Root, get node, uh, yeah, that's good. Which probably means that instead of doing this, we can just go straight for get node slash lobby slash server request, yes. So we can actually skip that. Get node no instance. I think I might have to put get tree in front of this. That seems kind of logical. Scene tree, get tree. Is it like this? This is very strange. Uh, okay, so get node. Slash lobby. That does not seem to work. We're in line edit. Okay, so. How about relatively? So. We're in line in it, panel, panel container, lobby, HTTP request. Doesn't make sense for you? How about this? That seems to make sense to it. Oh, that works. Oh, 10 seconds went by and we got an error request. Okay, so that just is the same problem. We can get there relatively again, so get node. We are in the server listing. So same thing, panel, panel container, root or lobby. Tuck. Let's run that again and we'll have to wait 10 seconds because we already have a server in the database now and it should show up in our uh, text field, it does not. Invalid get index servers are based in, okay, so why not? Let's take this, I think I know why. It's because I'm rendering um, everything manually, that's true. So our convention is to actually render it back like this to have everything wrapped in a, in a sub key so that we'll, we'll add that commit that I'm just gonna push that to Heroku straight away, so. 
we'll do it to GitHub later. I'm, I'm trying to kind of work out how to make a better lobby user interface so that you can actually click on it. I, I, I mean, I know I can make it work to be able to click on uh, items in the text edit. I just think that there is a more conventional way to do this, but I'm not sure. So for now, um, okay, it's now in a sub key. Let's start this puppy up again. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm being a bit chaotic about this, but we're waiting for 10 seconds. We're getting an error in the get in, on base in. Wait a minute. Um, did we do that exactly like that uh, in line edit script? line edit ah we forgot to parse or i say we forgot to parse i'm making you complicit in my errors but i forgot to parse so now we can say uh, json.result servers again we wait for 10 seconds Oh my god, there's so many errors. Uh, in value type in function, insert text at cursor. In base text edit, cannot convert argument from one array to string. Of course, we are dealing with an array here. Um, how do we join an array? Uh, do we just do, um, actually, is it like Python? Oh, that is such a bad editor, bad editor. Um, I was trying to just select the whole thing and wrap it into um, parentheses, like any editor would do, but not Godot, apparently. I should be editing the code in Atom anyway. I'm not liking this editor so, so much. Non-existent function join in base string. I'm sure I used this somewhere. Very likely in my console. Pull string array. Okay, so I need to convert that into a pull string array. How is this coming back? Uh, I'm getting the whole hash. Okay, so all I want to get is the IP for now. So A, K, uh, okay, so hold on for a sec. I don't think I have to do that actually. Um, back to console, just join. So it's not like Python, but it's more like Ruby, I guess. Uh, get this, get that dot okay so first of all let's make this join thing happen slash n and yeah we do need to do it wrap this in a pull string right um let me like get back here Oh, I'm so lost. It doesn't like that. Oh, of course it won't like that. This cannot be it. This cannot be it, I'm pretty sure. what I thought. You know what we'll do? Um, 
probably dirty. Let me know in the comments if this is uh, easier. Like normally I would use some sort of a mapping function or something, but uh, I would have to figure that one out. So what we will do is uh, get this. Uh, just do for server in server stuck up home duck and and then insert text at cursor like this uh, actually no totally not like this like this server dot ip up and wrap that in a string so I can add a slash n to the end of it. I want to set the text to just blank. Is that possible? Okay, so now we are getting from our API a list of servers that refreshes every 10 seconds. Um, that's going to increase the load on our server quite a bit, but we can use caching uh, to reduce that significantly. We'll show you that uh, in the next video about multiplayer. Um, I'm going to end it here because again, I don't want to make these things too long. I think you saw me uh, struggling enough and hope hopefully you saw me solving the problems enough to get something out of this. If you have any ideas on how to make these videos better, please let me know. I think we've been going on for 43 minutes as I can see right now, so um, I gotta quit, you know. Um, we didn't even do that much, but uh, yeah, I'll try to make more videos quicker. Um, I'm just, I'm dealing with some life stuff at the moment. Uh, it's gonna be over next month so uh hopefully hope I'm, I'm gonna try to make more videos quicker so goodbye for now and um hope you liked it